We're on the last section for the statistics unit chapter, or I mean, I'm sorry, unit five, okay? So we're doing 11.3, and we are going to learn how to graph a line, all right? So a line is an equation involving two variables that makes a straight line when it is graphed. Now, I'm going to give you the equation of a line. This is called a linear equation. All right, so we're going to have a, an equation with two variables. Y equals mx plus b. All right, first thing. This is on your formula sheet. Next thing you might say, well, Ms. Schamberg, that's four variables. I get what you're saying. The X and the Y are our variables. The M and the B represent something for which we will put in numerical values there. Okay, so we'll get to that and I'll show you. But before we do, we want to talk about the different types of lines and what is called their slopes. Now, Slope is denoted by M. So see this M? That tells you the slope of a line, okay? And we find it by what's called a rise over run. All right, so I am going to start with one line. So I'm going to call this line one, okay? All right, so I'm going to come over here, and I am going to go here, and I am going to go here, and I am going to try, I'm looking for something that can be my straight edge. Bear with me. I'm gonna connect these two and call this line one. Now when you think of slope, think of a slope of a hill. Is the slope going up, down? Is it really steep or not very steep? Okay, so this is line one, all right? Now notice, now when we look at lines, determining their slope, we, we kind of read it like a book from left to right, all right? So the rise means that it will either go up or down. Up is positive, down is negative. The run means you will go left or right, and left is negative, right is positive, okay? All right, so the first thing that I can determine on this line one is that going left or right, it goes upward. Okay, here's how I remember that, all right? Upward, if I were to die and go upward, that means I would go to heaven, that is a positive thing. So since this line goes upward, that tells me that I have a positive slope. Now, we're going to find the slope by doing rise over run. Okay, here's how we do that, all right? We start at a point that is at the corner of some squares, and we're going to travel to another point that is in the corner of the squares, okay? Now, what I want you to notice is, I start here, we always go up or down first. So think of this as like driving through a neighborhood and these are blocks, okay? I'm going to, to get from my house to this house, I'm going to go up one, two, three, four blocks. Up means positive, so I'm going to go up four blocks. And then from there, I'm going to turn and go to the right, and right is positive one, two, three, four. And then four divided by four is one. So this line has a slope of one. All right, now I'm going to change. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but now I'm going to do a line two, and this time I'm going to do this in purple. 
Alright, so Alright, I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go here. Okay? So again, I'm going to connect those two. This is line two. Alright? Now, is my slope positive or negative? Again, read the line from left to right. If I start at the left and I go to the right, it's going downward. If I were to die and go downward, that would be a negative thing. So since it goes downward, that tells me that I have a negative slope. Okay? All right, now we're going to find what that actual slope is. All right, so think of neighborhoods again. All right? It doesn't matter which, where you start. Say I started here, okay? And I'm going to drive down or negative one, two, three blocks. You always go up or down first. So I'm going to go down three blocks and over one, which would give me negative three. Now, Let's say that a classmate started here. Would they get a different slope? Well, here's what they would do. If I started at this house and went here, I would go up or positive one, two, three blocks. But then I would go to the left or negative one. And notice they both give me negative three. So it doesn't matter which one you start with. You will get the same slope. All right, now I'm going to do a yellow highlighter. Okay. Um. Okay. So this is line three, so line three, this is my yellow highlighter, okay? All right, so notice that this is a horizontal line. Alright, so let's figure out its slope. Alright, so I'm just going to pick two points on the line. It doesn't matter what you pick. So let's say that I pick here and I pick here. Alright, so I start here and I'm going to travel here. Alright, remember it's rise over run. Okay, so rise over run. All right, so if I'm here and I'm driving to this neighbor, I am not going to go up or down. It's just a straight shot. So rise up or down, I don't do anything. So that's zero, and then I run to the right, positive one, two, three. Well, if you'll go to your calculator, that gives you zero. So it has a slope of zero. Here's what I equate it to. Think of a treadmill, a horizontal line. When you have your treadmill and you get started and there is no incline, the incline reads zero. All right, so a horizontal line, think of a treadmill that has no incline on it, so it's zero. All right, now I'm going to do line four. So line four. And this is my pink highlighter. Notice that this line is a vertical line.
Okay. All right. So to find its slope, I'm just going to choose any two points on the line. Okay. So if I start here and travel here, so rise over run. All right. So if I start here, I'm going to go down negative two. And then I'm already there. So I don't go left or right. So that's zero. All right. Well, let's look what happens here. What do I have? Negative two, zero. You cannot divide by zero. That's not possible. So this is what we call undefined. It's not possible. So you'll always, a vertical line always has an undefined slope. Here's the way that I think of that. Okay, the treadmill horizontal line has an incline of zero. Your treadmill, it is not possible to get an incline that is vertical, so it is undefined. All right, now we're going to look at slopes in relationship to our linear equation. Okay, so this is on your formula sheet. All right, so remember, it's an equation. That's why we have an equal sign. Two variables. The two variables are the x and the y. All right, now, we've already talked about slope, so we know m is our slope. So if m had a slope of 0, I know I have a horizontal line. If m had a slope of positive 1, I know it goes upward. If m is a slope that's a negative, I know my line goes downward. Now, the b, this is what is called the y intercept. This will be just a constant, meaning it's just a number, and this is where the line crosses, oops, I can't spell crosses today, crosses the y axis. Okay? So again, the B, the y-intercept, will always be a constant, which means it's just a number out there by itself. Okay? All right. So this says graph this linear equation. All right? So the first thing that you're going to do is you first locate the y intercept. Okay, so think of y equals mx plus b. The constant is your y-intercept. Now this is where you need to be careful. Whatever sign is in front of it needs to go with it. So since that's minus, then the y-intercept is negative 5. So what that means is on the y-axis, you locate negative 5. Well, if I start at the origin and I locate negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, here is where it crosses the y-axis. Now, if I asked you for that ordered pair, if I start at the origin, to get to this ordered pair, I don't move left or right. It would be 0, negative 5. So then secondly, then, I consider my slope, 4 thirds, and I think of that as rise over run. So go to your y-intercept and rise 4. So since it's positive 4, I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, run. Positive 3 means go to the right. 1, 2, 3. Now I have two points. So I will connect those two points. And then I'm going to make sure my line makes sense. 
Notice from left to right it goes upward. That means my slope should be positive. Sure enough, my slope is positive, so I should be fine. All right, next one. So first we're going to locate the y-intercept, which is the constant, because this is in the form y equals mx plus b. So positive 2, this is where it crosses the y-axis. This is my y-axis. Positive 2 would be right here. That ordered pair is 0, 2. Then I look at the slope, which is negative 3. All right, well, I want to write this as rise over run. I want it in fractional form. Well, to write a whole number in fractional form, you just put it over 1. So I would go rise, negative 3, that tells me to go down, 1, 2, 3, run, positive 1, go to the right 1, and then connect my two points. And then I want to ask myself, does my line make sense? From left to right, it goes downward, which means I should have a negative slope. And sure enough, I have a negative slope. So I know I'm okay. All right. Huh. I only have one variable, x. When you only have one variable. All right. If we only have x... What that means is my line crosses, it intersects, okay? Crosses or intersects the x-axis at that number. All right, so here's my x-axis. It crosses it at negative 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. Now, you got to be careful. I have a lot of students that want to draw this way. It's not that because it's not crossing the x-axis. If you drew it right here, it's laying on top of the x-axis. Okay? So when x is negative 3, if I created a bunch of ordered pairs, okay, it's telling me y can be anything you want it to be. The x just always has to be negative 3. So I could say y is 2. That would give me the order pair negative 3, 2. I could say y is 0. That would give me the order pair negative 3, 0. I could say that x is, or x is negative 3. I could say that y is negative 1. That would give me the order pair negative 3, negative 1. You could have chosen 5. It, y can be anything. The only restriction is that x has to be negative 3. All right? So what happens if I were to graph this? Negative 3, 2. Negative 3, 0. Negative 3, negative 1. So remember, it crosses the x-axis at negative 3. Crosses the x-axis at negative 3, all right? So what does that create? A vertical line for which I know that the slope is undefined because I cannot get my treadmill to go like this, all right? So that's when you have an X and no Y. What if you have a Y but no X? All right, well, this tells me that my line crosses the Y axis at that number. So here's my y-axis, so I'm going to find positive 4, 
Now again, it's not laying on top of the y-axis, it crosses the y-axis. Again, I could create ordered pairs, but this time x can be anything, y has to be 4. So say I said x was 3, 0, negative 2. So x can be anything, the restriction is y has to be 4. So this is the ordered pair, 3, 4, over 3, up 4, 0, 4, don't go left or right, go up to 4, negative 2, 4, negative 2, up 4. So it crosses the y-axis at 4. What does this give me? It gives me a horizontal line for which the slope is 0 because on a treadmill I can do that. Okay, so that's how to graph. Now, You are going to need to use the linear equation y equals mx plus b. So you're going to have to write an equation and then apply it. Okay, so in doing this, your variables will always be x and y. Okay, this b will be the number that is constant. Okay, that's what you got to pay attention to. All right, so let me write this again y equals mx plus b. So we are searching for two numbers. We're searching for a number to go in place of the m and for a number to go in place of the b. And the key to that is what is constant, whatever constant is your b. All right. The standard fare for a taxi in Enid is $4.50 plus, so we have $4.50 and then $0.25 cents per mile. So because this says per mile, this has something connected to it. Here's your constant. Here is connected to something, all right? So write a linear equation. Since this is my constant, then my equation is y equals something x plus something. This is my constant, 450. This says per mile, so it's 20, whoops, 25 cents. That's supposed to be 20, 0.25, sorry about that. 0.25 per mile. So here's the equation. That's one thing you're going, let me rewrite that. There. All right, so one thing you're gonna be required to do is to give me an equation. Then it says, after you've found your equation, use the equation to find the cost of a five-mile ride. Okay, so x is equal to a five-mile ride. And then we're going to do x for a 15-mile ride. All right, so now I'm going to use this equation. y equals 25 cents. Per, so I'm going to multiply it times 5 miles plus $4.50. So all I'm doing is in place of the x, I'm putting the how far we're going, which is 5 miles. So in my calculator, I'm going to put 0 0.25 times 5 miles plus the constant of $4.50. So it's going to cost me $5.75. And then here, y equals 25 cents for 15 miles 
plus the constant of $4.50. Twenty-five cents times fifteen plus four fifty, so this would cost me eight dollars and twenty-five cents. So you are going to be asked to write an equation, and then use that equation to do some calculations. So let's do one more example. The cost of a large cheese pizza is eight dollars, with each additional topping of forty-five cents. All right. So $8, each additional topping is 45. So this is the one that would change. If I had one topping, 45 cents. Two toppings, or two additional toppings, then I would have 45 cents and another 45 cents. So here is my constant. So my equation is y equals something x plus your constant. And your constant is, you have to pay $8 and then $0.45 cents for each additional topping. Alright, then let's say that I said, what would a pizza cost you if you had four additional toppings? Forty-five cents times four additional toppings plus the constant of whoops eight dollars. Four plus eight dollars. Not nine point eight dollars. That would be nine dollars and eighty cents. What if I wow wanted eight additional toppings? like a lot on top of your pizza. So now it would be y equals 45 cents for each topping plus the base cost of eight dollars. Eleven dollars and sixty cents. Okay. That finishes up this unit. Good job.